Gee, Dad, I was just trying to stop those dead people from spitting phlegm into God's face. That much I understand, Oral. But there are other ways of preserving God's gift of life. How? Well, for one, where in this book does it say the dead have to be naked? Well, it doesn't really. But some of their clothes were stinky and messy with blood. Their clothes didn't smell oral. Their bodies smelled. Their disgusting, exposed bodies. Oh, I guess I was too caught up in bringing them back to life to notice. That's no excuse. Nudity is a horrible thing and should only be committed as a last resort. You know the 11th commandment. Thou shalt be ashamed of thy natural anatomy. Oh yeah, those lost commandments always throw me off. Didn't you notice all the people running away in terror? Yeah, but I thought they were just scared of their brain getting eaten. Life isn't that simple. I'm sorry I goofed up. I was just trying to be good, so you could love me more than you do now. Oh, Oral, I could never love you more. People only have a certain amount of love in them, and I'm afraid I have to divide mine up between at least a dozen people. Oh. But remember, son, I love you enough. I love you enough too, Dad. <laughs> That doesn't explain why you were out past curfew. But, Dad, how else was I going to be God's chef? Ladies needed to be asleep for me to shoot my yummy contents into them. You're not supposed to be God's chef, Oral. God's chef is only a whimsical fellow like Santa or Charles Darwin. Come on, Pop. I'm too old to believe in that stuff. Worthless piece of sugar! All because I didn't want to sin by spilling my seed and not procreating. Is that what this is all about? Yeah. I had a little talk with Reverend Putty. I see. Well, Oral, I think I'm partially to blame for all of this. You see, by not trusting you enough to tell you the truth about procreation, I led you astray as to how God would want you to give women babies. What do you mean, Dad? Well, I mean, the good Reverend was right. Spilling your seed wastefully is a sin, but it's also a sin to procreate in odd, exciting ways. Men and women have only one holy position, and that's called the missionary position. The missionary position? Yes, it's the most loving and satisfying position the Bible has to offer. It got its name from missionaries who taught backwards cultures how to have morally righteous sexual intercourse. Neat! Who thought of the missionary position, Dad? I believe it was first developed by Noah, who was disgusted by the horny, godless ways of some erotically charged animals on the ark. Wow! And, of course, it's the all-important Lost Twelfth Commandment. Thou shalt only have sex face-to-face, -face, man on top. That explains a lot. I was on top, though. Yeah, well, it is also a sin to use fun equipment. Oh. But anyway, in not telling you all the facts to begin with, it was my mistake this time, son, not yours. Then do I get to spank you with my belt? <laughs> <laughs> I think not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand, son. Why get mixed up with a fellow like that? Gee, Dad, I was only trying to be a good Christian and help the poor. The poor? Oral, that man was richer than me. He was? Mm-hmm. Selling crack is a lucrative business right now. People love it. That poor man is making a killing. He's lucky. But he looks so down and out. Ha! More like up and in. Wow. Anyway, all this doesn't explain why you got wrapped up in all this awful business. Well, I gave him money, so he gave me the crack. And I had to use it, Dad, remember? Because of what you said to me. It's a sin to waste good money. That is right, son. I'm proud of you for that. But I don't know if you realize the true danger of crack. Crack is a gateway to slang. Slang? Yes. Remember, son, people know who you are by the words you use, not the things you do. I'm sorry, Dad. From now on, when I do drugs, I'm going to speak properly. Atta boy. Just remember the lost 13th commandment. Thou shalt not bastardize the American language. Oh. Well, I think you've learned your lesson. Now give me that crack. And half the profit I make from it will go into the donation tray this Sunday at church. How much did you pay for it? Fifty bucks, but it's really good. You can probably get double that. <laughs> That's my boy. Let's eat. Frankly, Oral, I'm disappointed. Not only in you, but in myself as well. 
when I found out that you were selling your urine at school, the urine that God gave you, the urine that flows endless from your bladder, I lowered my head in shame. You don't pay for your urine, son. Why should you make other people pay for it? I just wanted you to see that I could make a living doing something so I wouldn't have to sprint to the unemployment office. Oh, Oral, you have a long time to decide what you do for a living. And remember, when you do start working, it's not going to be as easy as peeing in a Tupperware container. Working is a very hard, soul-numbing and joyless experience, son. Gosh, thanks for preparing me for the future, Dad. You're the best. If I can make sure you're ready for the dead-end bleakness of adulthood, then I've done my job. Now, let's go eat, kid. Oral, I want you to stay away from that person. But, Dad, she has such a warm attitude. Warm attitude? You kids today and your slang. It's true. She's very pleasant. Son, she's only pleasant because she's different. Remember that. When you're normal like everyone else here in Moralton, you have the luxury of not being pleasant. Now, what possessed you to go in there in the first place? Well, I read in the magazine that a piercing on my Johnston would make my wife happy. You don't have a wife? I know, but you know me, Dad. Sometimes I just can't wait to start doing the right thing. I figured well, it's never too soon to do God's work. Oral, women don't need all these fancy bells and whistles to be happy. Yeah, I know that now. In fact, your mother doesn't care one lick about that part of our relationship. All a woman really needs to be happy is a few little hungry mouths to feed and some dirt to clean up. Really? That's it? Yep. That's why they're smarter than us. They found out the simple way to be happy. Wow. Now let's go make your mom even happier and eat her food. I'm surprised at you, Oral. You know that only God and the government can decide who lives and who dies. But God is in me, Dad. Well, sure, there's a little bit of God in all of us, just not enough to really do any good. Really? Mm-hmm. Besides, God obviously wanted that woman to stay alive or he would have finished her off himself without your help. But why would he want her to suffer, Dad? Oh, suffering is a big part of God's plan. So it could have been for a number of reasons. Maybe she was a loose woman. Or maybe she didn't love Jesus the same way we do. Or maybe she loved another woman the wrong way. Gosh. You see, it's not our place to be judge and jury. So in the future, Oral. Just judge. Good boy, son. Good boy. Let's eat. But, Dad, I was going to repent. Repent? Oh, um... Well, that's different. You should have told me that before I gave you the old... I know. I tried, but I couldn't get a word in edgewise. Oh, <laughs> sorry. This baby's a little loud. Tell you what. Let me call Reverend Putty and set you two up with a little chat. He should be able to unravel this moral rat's nest. <sighs> sorry to interrupt your dinner, Reverend. Company isn't an interruption, Oral. Just an occasional reminder of my involuntary solitude. Oh, good. Yeah, good. So, I hear you've been breaking some pretty important rules out there. Yeah, ten to be exact. Mm-hmm. Look, we'd all like to break the Ten Commandments, son. Some commandments more than others. But they are there for a reason. I know. I just wanted an exciting Halloween, and I thought being scared of God would do the trick. My boy, God is scary enough without getting under his skin. I mean, think about it. He makes hurricanes and diseases and stress and foreign cultures and bees and choking. Gee, he sure works in mysterious ways. He's not mysterious, Oral. He works in one way. Give him the opportunity and he's gonna get you. But he's God, Reverend. Isn't everything he does good? <laughs> No, not by a long shot. Everything he does is right, but that's very different. Now, go do us all a favor and repent before you make the whole town go up in flames. I sure will. Bye, Reverend. And thanks. 
Now I know that God is the scariest monster of all on Halloween. Yes, but also remember that the Lord's terror is not just for one day. You must keep it in your heart all year round. You bet. Would you like some soft steak before you go? No, thanks. My mom's making meatloaf tonight. Sounds joyous. Sure is. <laughs> Bye.